it's Rach and welcome back to my channel. If you're returning then thank you so much for your continued support. If you're new then make sure to hit the subscribe button down below so that you can keep up to date with all my videos. So today is May the 15th and it is Hyperemesis Gravidarum Awareness Day. If you don't know what hyperemesis is, then stay tuned, I will explain a little bit about it and I will also tell you what not to say to a woman suffering from it. So hyperemesis is very severe nausea and vomiting that lasts throughout pregnancy. This is not morning sickness, I need to stress this, it's not morning sickness. So women who have HG have severe vomiting and severe nausea to the extent that they often need to be hospitalised for malnutrition or dehydration. So I had hypremesis from week five of my pregnancy and I had it right the way through until the day my son was born. It did ease off a little bit kind of in the middle of my pregnancy so I could kind of function a bit better and have more of a normal life but it never completely went away. On the days when it was really really bad I couldn't leave the bed let alone the house. I was so unbelievably unwell. I couldn't even swallow water. I would literally swallow a sip of water, trying to stay hydrated obviously. It would hit my gag reflex and come straight back. So I was hospitalized numerous times throughout my pregnancy. I had to go in and be rehydrated on an IV drip because I was so dehydrated from not being able to get enough fluids into my body. Obviously it's important for the fetus as it's growing to have nutrition and kind of fluids. Thankfully they are technically a little parasite and they just literally, quite literally, suck the life out of you. And uh, James took everything he needed from me, which was wonderful because he was fine and obviously he thrived and I literally felt like I was going to die any day. Um, it really wasn't fun, it was a lot of work, I did not enjoy pregnancy. In fact, I'd go as far as to say I hated pregnancy, but I have James now, he was absolutely worth it. I feel incredibly blessed to have him, but I just wanna, you know, really stress that hyperemesis, it is hard work. Here are some things that you should not say if somebody tells you they're suffering with hyperemesis. Please, please, please don't say these things. And if you stay tuned till the end, I will tell you some things you should say that will be very much appreciated and actually be helpful. Number one, it's not just morning sickness. It's very nice to try and empathise with people. However, hyperemesis is not morning sickness. It is a very serious condition that requires professional intervention. It is a medical condition. It is not a normal part of pregnancy. It is not normal to need to go into hospital to be rehydrated. It's a very serious thing. Can we please stop saying that it's just morning sickness or acute morning sickness or really bad morning sickness? It's not morning sickness. People would kill to be you. I had this throughout my pregnancy and it nearly destroyed me. I get that if you are going through an incredibly difficult issue like infertility or just issues around fertility in general, that must be heartbreaking. And yes, every single pregnant person you see, it must be like a knife to the heart. I cannot begin to imagine how incredibly painful that is. However, we need to stop saying to women who are pregnant that they're not allowed to not like being pregnant just because somebody else can't be pregnant. To say to someone with hyperemesis when they are so unwell that they require serious medical intervention and that they are desperately worried that how could their baby possibly survive this? I mean, I honestly, James is a miracle. I do not know how that kid survived, but he did. And I'm so grateful. But you know what? It was really, really bloody hard. And when people turned around to me and said, oh, some people would kill it be you, and shut me down when I tried to talk about what I was experiencing or, you know, complain or moan, it was so invalidating and it just really hurt me. And lots of people said this to me throughout my pregnancy and made out that I should really be enjoying this horrendous experience. Actually, no. Pregnancy was a means to an end. The end result was beautiful and incredible and I'm so grateful. I'd do it a million times. But it was bloody hard work and it was terrifying being that unwell. So can we please stop saying to women with hyperemesis that people would kill to be them. They're completely different struggles, okay? Both are equally valid. Have you tried ginger? Funnily enough, I have tried every single thing that you could possibly think of and yet everyone seems to suggest ginger as if it will magically fix this very serious medical condition. Ginger doesn't fix it. Honestly, in, in the support groups and stuff that I was in for hypremesis, this was like a running joke, as much as you can laugh about something that literally makes you want to cry. Ginger doesn't help this kind of nausea. It's great if little ginger pregnancy pastels and all this lovely stuff help morning sickness, that's awesome. They don't help 
hyperemesis, nor do sickness bands, nor do any of these other wonderful remedies, you know, that might have helped morning sickness a little bit. They definitely don't help HG. Please stop telling us to have ginger as if we haven't already tried every single thing you can possibly think of. We're not lying in bed thinking, oh my goodness, like I feel like I'm gonna die. Oh, I'll just, you know, lie here and wait to feel better. Like we've tried, we have, we have Googled everything. We have tried everything. And if the medication isn't working, then nothing's gonna work. You'll feel so much better second trimester. This is so unfair, right? Because when I first started with HG at week five, I just thought it was normal morning sickness. So I was like, oh gosh, this is awful. Why does no one talk more about this? Why would anyone get pregnant if this is what it's like? And uh, yeah, even medical professionals said to me, oh, I should settle down by second trimester. And I thought, great. And I'm counting down the days and the weeks and then second trimester comes and I'm like, uh, we're on to our fourth combination of medicine and I'm still feeling like I'm gonna die. Uh, and then I got to third trimester and then literally right the way into labour, it was only after I'd given birth and woken up from my general anaesthetic, different story, that yeah, I well then I felt sick because of that, but probably by the next day I felt a lot better and it was a huge relief. But yeah, it doesn't go away by second trimester. It's not morning sickness. Aren't those medications harmful for the baby? <sighs> Imagine how good that feels as a mum. Not only was I on medication for HG, I was also on it for rheumatoid arthritis. So I felt like the double whammy there. I was like, yay, I feel like such a good mum right now. Thank you, as if I'm not already endlessly worrying that I'm gonna do some kind of harm taking these medications that I actually require to stay alive right now. Um, yeah, and as if the medical professionals that I'm working so closely with, who are monitoring me very, very regularly, as if they haven't talked to me about the risks and the benefits and weighed them up and decided that medication's the best thing. If you're not a doctor, then you really don't say stuff like that. Come on. You need to eat for the baby. You don't say. What do you think we're doing? Come on. Like... Yeah, I'm just lying in bed, you know, having this ice pop because I thought I'd just try and lose a bit of weight while I was pregnant. I didn't want to lose 10% of my body weight, believe me. I didn't want to be struggling to even sip water. I'd have loved to have stuffed my face and eaten many things and I tried everything from the healthy to the unhealthy to anything. I literally was trying to get anything down my gob. And very rarely did anything stick if I could even get it past the gag reflex in the first place. So, yeah, I know, obviously you need to eat for your baby, obviously it's good to have a healthy diet in pregnancy, and obviously we're super aware of that already, and don't need to be guilted, we already feel guilty enough, we didn't ask for this, we're just doing the best we can to survive. Should you be eating that? As I stuff McDonald's into my face, saying, please, Lord, let this stay down, please. You know what? It kind of goes out the window. With HG, honestly, the, the midwives and the doctors, I remember them sitting there saying to me when I was stressing about eating all this unhealthy food and stuff, they were like, look, you eat whatever is going to stay down. We don't care what it is, obviously within reason. Um, they're not saying, you know, chug a litre of wine. But within reason, like, you eat whatever you need to eat. If it stays down, that is all we care about because it's better to have something in you than nothing. It is better to have a McDonald's in your stomach than nothing. So yeah, it was a game of survival and let's not comment on what pregnant women eat full stop because that's just rude. You'll forget all about it when you hold your baby. I mean, this is laughable for me for many reasons, <laughs> but honestly, let me tell you from experience, I have not forgotten what high premises was like. I mean, you can probably tell from me talking in this video, I'm not pregnant now, I'm six months postpartum and I still feel this strongly about it. Yeah, you don't forget. It's worth it, absolutely is it worth it, but I'm not gonna forget that it was sheer living hell. If you have someone come to you and say, I am suffering from hyperemesis, this is what I would urge you to say to them. How can I help? If you are someone who's suffering with HG and you have a job, perhaps another child, a whole host of different circumstances, it can be a nightmare because you physically, you can't get out of bed. It's horrendous. You can't do the housework. You can't run around after a toddler. You can't go to work. Women end up signed off for months and months and months. So ask what you can do to help. What are your safe foods? Amazing. What are your safe foods? Because we all have safe foods. Ice pops was one of mine. Like I say, I've literally got so many in the cupboard. It's insane. But if someone tells you what their safe food is, then you can offer, you can say, right, I'm gonna to go to the shops, I'm gonna stock up on that for you, save you a trip, 
it's amazing and it's so helpful. Don't underestimate how, how incredibly helpful that can be. One of the most powerful things you can say to someone going through HG is I believe you. To hear those words and to know someone believes you, it really does help and it makes a difference. So if someone comes to you and tells you their story or says they're struggling, then just say, I hear you, I believe you. What can I do to help? So that is High Premises Gravidarum Awareness Day. I hope this video has been useful. If you need any more information about it, I'm gonna pop a load of links down below with resources and places that you can go to if you need support. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, be sure to click that subscribe button down below and I will see you next time. Bye.